Time now to bring in our panel of parliamentary journalists. Tana McCharles is a parliamentary reporter with the Toronto Star. Joël Denis Bellavance is the parliamentary bureau chief for La Presse. And John Iveson is a columnist and parliamentary bureau chief for Post Media. Uh, Tana, let me start with you. The fiscal update will be out Tuesday, and that will include, we now know, $40 billion to settle uh, the ongoing battle over child welfare compensation and a number of other class action suits, and to ensure mm -hmm. uh, reforms to Indigenous child, the child welfare system. I think, I think it's about half and half, the minister said today. Uh, still lots of questions about how the money will be spent precisely, but this will be another major spending announcement we're going to hear about in the fiscal update. Right. And I think it's the first time that we've gotten, at least from the federal government, there have been various estimates over the years floating around about how many billions it would cost to ultimately settle this. But we don't look. Mark Miller was out today basically saying, don't want to put the cart before the horse here. We still have to work out the details. This is not confirmation of a settlement, but this is the federal estimate of what to solve uh, the big child welfare ruling out of the Human Rights Tribunal that they've been fighting over. Many Canadians have heard about it over the campaign uh, to settle that and th about three other class action lawsuits mm. and to build capacity on reserves to deal, to allow First Nations and um, Indigenous communities to offer their own child welfare services and uh, also to deal with principal uh, demands for health services. But look, the thing that surprised me about this coming out today uh, is that we had all been led to believe that the fiscal economic statement tomorrow was going to be a no mini budget, no great big spending, no great big news in here, nothing to see here, folks. But you know, that's big news. That's yeah. a big, big figure. And, and makes me wonder, John, uh, quickly to you, it makes me wonder here whether, you know, this, this, uh, that would have been a big sort of sticker shock uh, thing. And in, in if, uh, you know, if we'd all seen it for the first time in the fiscal update tomorrow, uh, the timing's kind of interesting to sort of come out the day before. And it, it, is that an effort to sort of, you know, damp down the sort of sticker shock that people would see if they just saw it for the first time tomorrow? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, when I saw that number, 40 billion, um, you know, I got a, I had to do a double take of it. I mean, that's a that's a big number for a government that had already announced 100 billion, 140 billion dollars over five years in the in the budget. Another 70 billion dollars spending in the uh, in their election platform. Mm. I mean, we're we're getting to a stage where um, you know the idea that that, that post pandemic spending was going to go back to some kind of normal. I don't think that we're going to see you know the the typical. Uh, program spending to GDP ratios around about 15 percent. That's what they were projecting in the budget. I don't think we're going to get there over the next few years, and it looks like big government is here to stay. Mm. Uh, Joel Denis, what are your thoughts on this? Well, what I do find interesting is that this news is leaking out today, just uh, 24 hours before the finance minister, uh, Chris Jacques is releasing her economic update. And just to put it in perspective, 40 billion is a huge number. And let's let, and today the prime minister and uh, Karina Gould, uh, the Minister for Social uh, Development um, and Families, right. um, she uh, announced, they announced a new deal for with the New Brunswick on daycare services. And that is a, a program over five years that will cost $30 billion. And that's if we sign a deal with every province. So that puts it in pr perspective. I and mean, assuming the $40 billion that is being put aside will be accounted in this fiscal uh, year that is uh, ending on March 31st. So that means that the deficit will probably be higher because as the Auditor General says, you need to put your expenses as soon as you, you encounter them. Yeah. So if it's put aside, it will be all be accounted in this fiscal year. Yeah, just a, as an aside, of course, the, the, the big holdout still the province of Ontario trying to get a child care deal that it still doesn't have. And uh, one thinks Doug Ford probably wants that before an election in Ontario in June. But those talks still underway. Tonda, we finally got uh, long-awaited apologies today for the decades mm -hmm. of sexual misconduct in the Canadian military. And it came with a pledge that real change will come. That's a promise from uh, the new minister. How, how op optimistic do you think we should be that uh, change is really coming to the Canadian force? Well, it, it might be a bit early to say she's only been on the job two months, but only in two months. She's done more than Harjit Sajjan did in six years, and that is to accept uh, a recommendation to shift um, oversight of these cases from the military police themselves into the civilian realm. And look, I have the very strong sense that this is absolutely 
um, core to Anita and Nan's goals in this portfolio. She wants to assert civilian leadership over the military. And that's not just, I don't think, in the realm of sexual assault cases. I think she's going to assert stronger civilian oversight over a whole range of military activity, including procurement. So yeah. I would say, watch, let's see how it plays out. But I, I expect that, you know, this is only the beginning. John, what are your thoughts on the apologies we heard today? Apologies, plural, and uh, the significance of those and maybe what comes next? Well, I, th I think these apologies are significant. I mean, in, in all the years I've been reporting, when when people have been traumatized, it's equally as traumatizing as the the actual ev event of trauma that the official response uh, is not mm -hmm. sensitive and uh, and uh, caring. So I think this is a, a sign. It doesn't erase the trauma, but at least it doesn't add to it, and it maybe alleviates some some suffering from survivors. Um, I do think that there needs to be a, a, something of a rebalancing. I mean, just, at the moment, if you talk to senior officers, they're all just keeping their heads down. They feel the morale is terrible. There's a feeling that there are, mm -hmm. are some good officers who've been, who've been accused of things. They're not able to defend themselves. The accusations are never made public. And everybody's being tarred with the same brush. So, you know, at some point, the military needs to get back being the military and concentrate on the subject of defense, and maybe with any luck, this apology helps on that process. Yeah, it's, it seems like there may be a long road ahead on all of this, as well, Denis, but um, what are your thoughts? Were these apologies today meaningful, do you think? And what do you think of the minister's promise that real change is coming? Well, after two months at uh, the helm of the national defense, we, I, we should say that a lot of changes have happened under her uh, leadership. and. We're told that those apologies were planned even before the pandemic and during the pandemic started uh, by the department, <coughs> but it, they were not uh, offered to uh, the victims because of the pandemic. Well, we're still in a pandemic, and she decided, the minister, Antonin, to offer them just to turn the page on this very somber chapter of the Canadian Armed Forces. At some point in our history, one prime minister said, just watch me when he was confronted with separatist issues in Quebec. Now, I would say for Anita and I'm just watch her, I think she's determined to make leave her mark in terms of uh, being the first uh, female in a long time for a female defense minister. All right. Uh, we'll have to leave it at that for tonight. Thank you all. Uh, appreciate uh, the chance to talk to you again, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter.